Right to the book of Judges. Open to the book of Judges, chapter 13. Are we rolling? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm back here. I'm watching it. The other night we were rolling and my thing went off. The camera must have went off on Sunday night and missed the first part of my my uh, teaching on uh, soul winning. The best part too, man. I'm gonna have to do it, um, redo it on Sunday night and go over the first part again. But let's see here, Judges. What did I say? Sixteen or oh, thirteen? Gee, keep me in line there, brother. Judges, chapter thirteen. Let me see. Verse, I think it's number five. Uh, it says this in uh, Judges chapter 13, verse number five. It says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the, from the womb, and he shall um, begin to, to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. In verse 6, then the woman came... Oh, let me back up, let me back up. Verse 3, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the unto the woman, and he said unto her, Behold, now thou art, uh, <coughs> thou art barren? After, uh, and bearest not, he said, But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Verse 4, I knew I should have started in 3. Now therefore, be, beware, I pray thee, the angel's praying there, is it any, I pray you, or I'm telling you, I'm asking you, he says, be careful, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing, for lo, this, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his, his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. We thank you that your word is true. And Lord, I pray for tonight's service. I pray for this message. I pray that you would help us. Help us, Father, to be like this. Help us to be, Father, Lord, that Nazarite unto you tonight, Father. Father, help us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, give us strength tonight to live our lives for God. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to entitle this Nazarites. I had a whole different sermon, or, or I don't know what I could call them sermons. I think it too, sounds too, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, the, the message that I had was different than this, and before service, the Lord started showing me some things. And I don't know really why I'm going this way, other than the Holy Spirit's leading me this way. Um, but the, the thing is, is that the other day, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, last Wednesday, because um, I know it wasn't yesterday, I think it was last Wednesday, that I, that I heard somebody say, oh, you got your ashes? And, they, and so they went and got their ashes, you know, from the father, from the priest, or, you know, the Catholic church, and, and they go, oh, yeah, 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 I got my ashes, because you forget, you know, you know, they're talking to everybody with big old ashes and all over. <laughs> and what it meant, and I, I preached on this once, because I said, hey, listen, what it is, is a 40-day thing, right, until, from then until Easter, where the Catholics separate themselves for 40 days. And they, and they fast from one thing, drinking or 
cigarettes or chocolate or coffee or ice cream. I know some people have stopped ice cream for 40 days. That's hard, brother. <laughs> and so, anyway, they set themselves apart for 40 days and they fast from this. And I'm looking at this and I'm studying it out. And uh, what I'm learning from, the, from this thing called the, the vow of a Nazarite was, was not necessarily a 40 day, but a 30 day or so fast set apart um, by a, a, an individual who would take this vow of, of Nazarene and, or Nazarite and, and they would for 30 days separate themselves um, from, from three different areas or, or from a couple different things. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But one of the things that they would separate themselves was from alcohol, from wine. Did, did you hear what he said? Don't, let, don't drink any wine? Yeah. Or don't drink any strong drink? Don't even eat grapes? Don't eat anything to do with, with the vine at all? Yeah. He says, for this child shall be a Nazarite from, to, to the Lord. For he shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. A Nazarite unto who? God. Unto God. <clears throat> You with me? And so what these people in the Catholic Church are doing is they're separating themselves for 40 days of fasting from a, a sin that they feel, uh, you know, or, or something. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But, but uh, and I preached on this one time, and I said, at least they're doing something. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You with me? Because a lot of things, oh, what is that going to do? And then they go drink right after. You know what I mean? They can't wait till the end so they can go get drunk. But at least they're doing something. What are you giving up? Right. You with me? Yeah. And you got to understand that, you know, and I, I wrote down here, and I'll tell you in just a minute, but a, but a Nazarite was somebody who set apart themselves. They took a voluntary vow to the Lord to say, you know what, I'm going to do this. One of the things they did was they, they, they would not drink. They wouldn't drink alcohol. You with me? Um, and the second thing they wouldn't do is cut their hair. Samson had long hair. Jesus had long hair. John the Baptist had long hair. You with me? And you'll see a few other ones. I think, you know who I think was even one? Uh, 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 I think it said it was Samuel. Was a Nazarite, the prophet. Uh, uh, unto the Lord. But it was a separating. It was a time of, of, uh, of separating yourselves. Of... of, of, of uh, a commitment to the Lord, right? One of the other things I wrote down, let me see, was a, a vow of dedication, that you were dedicating your life to the Lord for such and such a time. They wouldn't cut their hair. I was just reading, even before the service, on the, 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 the vow of Nazarene and what it meant and stuff. And do you know that a lot of the Rastafarians get their teachings from that, the vow of a Nazarite? They never cut their hair, and, you, and, the, and, the, and the Nazarites, or the, the vow of the Nazarite, when they had long hair, they were never allowed to even comb their hair. Because what happens when you comb your hair? Your hair, my wife's brush is full of hair, man. I have to clean it if I ever use her brush. Hey. <laughs> hair falls out, right? They weren't even allowed to, to, to comb their hair. They were allowed to scratch their head, and they were allowed to, and, and they had to, they couldn't even use certain kind of chemicals. They would just rinse their hair and stuff. When we were in Jamaica one time, uh, we were we, I, I went real early on the beach, and I seen this Jamaican, and he had, was a Rastafarian. He had hair, man, almost to his ankles, man. But this guy was rinsing it in the beach, you know what I mean, and just wetting it down and stuff. And I, I just seen him, and he was just. Whew, whew, you know, drying, trying to dry his hair, and it looks so cool, man. I said, I don't want dreadlocks. <laughs> but, but, you know what I mean? And that's one of the things that, have you, have any, anybody seen the Bible, the movie, the Bible? It's on the History Channel, and then you can buy the videos and DVDs. Uh, Samson, anybody seen Samson on there? That was played by Julio. <laughs> have you seen it? Yeah. Samson? He's that big old strong colored guy. And he had them long old dreadlocks. You with me? 
And he would, man, he tears stuff up. He was huge. He was a monster. But he had the long dreadlocks. I think that's the way Samson would have looked. You with me? Because remember when, when he was laying in the lap of Delilah, or before, and she was telling him, tell me the secrets of your strength, he was saying, if you take the seven locks of my hair and cut them, or no, unravel them, or something like that, that, that uh, I'll lose my strength. And she did it, and he jumped up and beat the Philistines up. So he lied to her, but he said he had seven locks, and they say that the, the, the Rastafarians talk about Samson being a Rastafarian because he had the, the dreadlocks, but it wasn't a, it, it, the Rastafarian is a whole, in itself, it's a whole different religion. I mean, it's heavy duty. It's not a good thing. You with me? So if you know people or involved in that or like Bob Marley and all this stuff, listen, there's so much involved, you don't even want to go there. You with me? But I'm not here to talk about Bob or Ziggy or anybody like that. But this lady had her son, uh, 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 the angel of, of the Lord said, uh, separate him. Uh, don't let a razor ever touch his head. I don't believe Samson drank. You know what I mean? And, and, and there's certain things he did. And the, uh, one of the other things they couldn't do is touch a dead body. If you touched a dead body, you were unclean. You had to go through all kinds of rituals, cut your hair off, and, and put it in the fire, and offer a slam, an uh, offering, and all this good stuff. But, but uh, uh, you couldn't touch it. Even if your mother and father died, you couldn't attend their funeral. But if you, if you look at this kind of in the spiritual sense, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you, you, you start to see kind of some of the things that the Lord even requires of us in our personal walk with Him. When He said, let the dead bury the dead. You with me? He wasn't being insensitive. He was saying, hey, the dude ain't even dead yet. Let him, let him you know, when he dies, you go to his funeral. But until then, you come and follow me. You with me? But there was a separation. I believe that some, when he was talking about uh, your mother and father, or, you know, sisters and brothers being dead and you not being able to go and stuff, I, I even believe that he was talking, spiritually speaking, in the future of our time, saying, listen, you may even have to cut off your own mother and father from your life. You may even have to ha have nothing to do with your sisters and brothers who are trying to get you to sin. Guys, got to understand something, okay? Tonight I'm not trying to control your life and I'm not trying to tell you, you know, I'm not against family. If anything I love is family. But there's a price to pray. You with me? There's a price to pray. Listen, my family wasn't always the way it is today. We've been doing this almost 30 years of our lives. Some of you barely started. You're trying, you're wondering why it ain't working for you like it is for us. We've been in this a long time. And we've been through so much suffering and so much pain, but it's given us, it's made us who we are today. And sometimes we even had to cut off our relatives and say, listen, we can't hang around with you no more. We can't come over like we used to. You with me? And it wasn't, you know what I mean? And, 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 it, and it wasn't that some of them were so, so bad, although others of them were. And them was the ones we had to just say, you know, they didn't understand, you know, can't come around, see you later, oh, they think they're too good, and all that stuff. There's a time of separation from that. I couldn't go around the alcohol, or I would backslide, and I knew that. You with me? You have to be smarter than the devil. You with me? And you have to understand your own weaknesses. Oh, well, I'll just go, and I won't be tempted, and this and that, pretty soon you're all drunk. You with me? But there has to be a time of separation of, with your life to them individuals who are blatantly trying to get you to backslide. You with me? I mean, I can understand if they respect you and they know you're a Christian and they're, and they're, they're going out of their way to be, you know, hide their stuff or anything like that. Or, you know, when you go over stuff like that, you know what I mean? But, but ones that are, come on, come on. Yeah. Them ones don't go anywhere near. Because you'll be the one, you backsliding, and that they can care less. Yeah. You with me? Mm -hmm. But like the like the the, the Catholic who, who has the forty days of, of uh, what, Lent, yeah. the Christian has the thirty days of of, of, a, of a vow of a Nazarite. You with me? 
And I don't want to get into this. I don't want to say, no, this is going to be what we're doing or anything like that. And I'm not even trying. I'm just trying to lay a foundation so you understand where I'm going with this. Nazarite was to stay away from drinking. You with me? Yeah. And some Nazarites were for 30 days. Other Nazarites were for a lifetime. You with me? I believe that God called, you know I mean, this ministry to abstain from drinking. Other <coughs> ministries you go to, to, they'll give you drink in the, off, in the, the communion. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And, and some of you will stay there, drink the whole cup. <laughs> Huh? But, you know what I mean, I, I really believe that, you know what I mean, the backgrounds that we come from, you can't be over there drinking. Yeah, that's right. You with me? But I really believe it. It's according to your faith. It's according to your dedication to the Lord. I really believe it. L let me just say this, and this is for free. In the temple of God, when God created a temple, or God caused uh, uh, Abraham or, I mean, Moses, to build the first tabernacle, which was a tent of meeting, but was a, was a uh, shadow of what heaven's like, there was uh, 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 the Holy of Holies, the very presence of God, was this sacred building nobody can go into. No one, except for one man dedicated called the high priest, was allowed to go in once a year yeah. to where the Ark of the Covenant was, and the, and the presence of God was there. Inside that ark was what? The Ten Commandments? Aaron's rod? And some manna from heaven that God had inside that holy of that, that ark of the covenant. And it was made of gold. And the angels, two angels came up looking at each other face to face. Which preachers have told about symbolizing fellowship. And that was cut off from everybody except for the uh, high priest. There was a, cur a curtain that would hide it from everybody else that they say some... Have you ever been to the old movie theaters? Remember? Well, some of you ain't old enough, but they used to have the curtains open. Shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then they close after the movie and stuff. But if yeah. you've ever went up to them and looked at them, you know, we were always behind them or some causing throwing stuff or, you know what I mean, making miles at the movie theater. So I know they're thick, man. Thick, thick, thick. I mean, heavy-duty curtains. Yeah. But they said that this curtain that separated the holy presence of God from, ever, from even the holy, uh, the holy place uh, uh, was, 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 was like two feet thick. Wow. Yeah. You with me? And the only time that the high priest ever went in there, into the very presence of God, once a year, and he had to fast, pray, cleanse himself. Could you imagine if you knew you are going to come to church and if your life ain't right, you're going to die? We wouldn't have very many church attendance. <laughs> huh? There'd be times I'd miss. I'd be like, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to die today. <laughs> huh? If you knew you were going to die, you, I mean, if they would be repenting, you have every little thought, sin, with everything they did, they'd be fasting, they'd be whatever, to go into the presence of God one day. They would put a, a bracelet on their foot with bells on it, you know what I mean, and a rope connected, and they would, they would let them into the presence, and they would like, shh, shh, shh. You can hear them walking around in there, and they, you know what I mean? And, and, and if you heard, Poof, <laughs> she started pulling him out. I think, man, he's sin, dirty dog. <laughs> but that was the holy of holies. The very holy presence of God was in that little chamber. And then he went into a bigger room. That chamber was within a, was, let's just say, for instance, this was it. And this section right here was the Holy of Holies. This was the very presence of God. And it separated you. And then there was a little bit bigger room that came out about, oh, maybe half ways, maybe not even that far. It went out around this way. And that was separated from, the, from, the, from those in the back. Yeah. This in here was called the Holy Place. This is where the show bread was. They would take the bread and they would, off, they would, they would roast the bread. And the bread was there like show bread. You know what I mean? An example of the manna from heaven or even the body of Christ and the bread was baked in such a way that it was lines of, you know how you burn a Burger King hamburgers? <laughs> then we're on the bottom of the bread and that symbolized Jesus is the bread of life and the, and the stripes 
By his stripes you're healed. And so the bread was in that, that this second room. Also with uh, the, the altar of incense, was, 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 you know, let's just say this is the altar of incense. You come here and you burn that incense and it was like a sweet smelling savor unto God. I call that praise and worship. And in that also was a candelabra with oil burning, which was the light of God. In that second part, you with me? Was the illumination, the revelation of the word and the worship. And then there was a separation. And then you have anybody can come in, including sinners, to the farthest back part. They can go around, but they can't come in here. This was, this was separated, you know what I mean, for the high priest and for those whose were, were li lives were right with God. Back there was an outer court where even the sinners, the Gentiles, could come and hang out at church. That's why sometimes the back rows are full. Because we're just kind of hanging out, just checking it out, seeing, you know. So at least we can run out that back door. You know, but anybody can hang out out there. Anybody can be there. But it was like, did you want to come in? Do you want to come into the revelation of God's word? You with me? He said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That bread represented Christ, his word, who he was, his stripes. You with me? Do you want to stay out there and hear about it? Do you want to stay out there and you know, kind of hear different teachings about it, or do you want to come on in and experience it? Do you want to come into the candelabra of the light, the, the light of God, you know what I mean, to where you're coming in, you know what I mean, and you're an illumination, and you're getting understanding of who Christ is and who God is. He's the light of the world, man. Or do you want to stand out there and just kind of look in the windows and say, yeah, man, God is good, still struggling, still, you with me? Still dealing with the world, still right. playing with the world, still hanging out with, with just, you know what I mean, who, uh, just, you know, common day people who don't really even have a heart or a thirst for God. Right. You kind of want to just stay out there in the outer courts, they called it. You with me? There's a song that says, take me into the holy of holies, take me in by the blood of the Lamb. You with me? Because see, to get to that second place, the holy place, is heavy duty. you got to get to get in there. You're, you're walking into some revelation, illumination, some serious worship. You with me? It's one thing to come and just kind of hear good music and look around and nothing, nothing happens here. It's another thing to open your heart unto God and say, let's fellowship, Lord. You with me? It's, 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 a, it's what, what the Nazarenes called that, that dedication, that, that consecration unto God. God, I want to come deeper with you. Come on now. But I don't want to stop right there at the reading of your word and getting some revelation at the who you are, the light of the world, and getting illumination and understanding of it. And then at your worship, really knowing and loving to worship and loving to sing and loving your presence. God, I want to go deeper. I want to know. I want to know you face to face. And see, when Jesus died on that cross, it said that when he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, that that member of the curtain was ripped. It said a great earthquake happened. And that and that two foot thick curtain, you know what I mean? Have you ever seen them guys rip the phone books? God took that two foot thick curtain that weighed thousands of pounds of weight. And he opened himself up through Jesus into his very presence. And he's like, come on in. No, 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 I'm good. I want to hang out out there. And God said, come deeper. I want to reveal to you who I am. I want to illuminate you to who I am. I want you to really touch me in worship. But I want you to come in here to my secret chambers. Know me. Knowing was always dealing with, in the Bible, and Abraham knew Sarah, and she conceived and had a child. What happened? They didn't go out there in front of everybody at the wedding and do their thing. They went into the secret chambers to where they, you know what I mean? I was listening today where it said God showed Abraham, uh, 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 Moses his glory. And what he showed him was his glory was his backside. Hmm? And when they would go into their secret chambers, Sarah would un unveil herself in her glory under her, under her Lord and under her husband. You with me? 
and together they knew each other and conceived and had children. Something so special and sacred to God that we've made it common and cheap today. Yeah. Come on now. You with me? God wants you to come in here. He's like inviting you into his very bedroom. Say, come on in, know me. I want to be in you, and I want you in me. I don't want you to go to church and just hear about me and just get a good revelation out of your daily devotional. I want you to come and fellowship with me. I want to hang out with you. Come on now. You with me? A, a Nazarite made a vow and said, God, I want to get closer to you. I'm tired of hanging out with a bunch of turkeys. I want to be soaring with eagles, Lord. Think about that one for a minute. Who's your friends and who are you hanging out with? Who are you making your fellowship with? Who are you listening to? Who are you laughing? Who are you loving? Who are you spending time? Who are you breaking bread with? I'm telling you, there's something heavy duty in that. The Bible even commands you in Matthew when it's talking about church discipline to those you know who are living in a sinful life. You with me? Yeah. To those you know who are living an adulterous life. Yeah. He says, don't even break bread with that person. Yeah. That's the word. That's not this pastor. Right, yeah. You with me? Yeah. If more people knew their Bible, there would be a lot less sin and a lot, less, a lot more discipline in the house of God. They yeah. think I'm heavy duty and hard. Hmm? Right. If we really lived according to the New Testament, not the Old Testament, the New, there'd be a lot of discipline in the house of God. Yeah. And there'd be a lot less sin in the house of the Lord. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. He said, if a brother you know, he's living an adulterous life, he's there having uh, sex outside of marriage, and this and that, or a sister, mm -hmm. and you know she's doing this, he says, don't even go to lunch with her. Because yeah. there's something about breaking bread with somebody you're fellowshiping with, you're fellowshiping with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying, man, we're on the common level. We're on common ground. We love each other. We both love Jesus. And we're not perfect, but we're trying to serve him with all our hearts. And you know what? Come into my, come into my uh, table and let's eat together. Come on. Jesus said in Re Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens that door, I'll come in and I will sup with them. It's up with him and he with me. See, that was a breaking. That's a communion. That's what we do here. You with me? A communion was a breaking of bread. A communion was a sharing. Jesus ate a meal. Then he took the bread and he broke it. You with me? Jesus wasn't eating with just anybody. Amen? This is getting real heavy in here tonight. But I'm talking about being a Nazarene, separating yourself, wanting more of God. If I asked you tonight, you know what I mean? I'm not asking you who's perfect. You with me? Because none of us can raise our hands. But I'm asking you tonight, who of you would say, I want to, I might, I, you know, I know where I'm at, but I want to be better. I want to go deeper with God. I want to really know Him. I want to understand Him more. I want Him really coming and work in our lives. You with me? I know many of you would lift your hand tonight. You say, that's me. And that's the thing a Nazarite would do. It's not, I'm not trying to preach tonight, you know, a doctrine on this whole drinking thing or anything like this. I'm just telling, trying to give you some background that somebody that was a true Nazarite would separate themselves from the drink. You with me? You wouldn't be over there socializing over a beer. Not when there's Diet Pepsi. Or coffee. God forbid, or Starbucks, <laughs> or Lipton tea, or whatever you drink, amen, or a bottle of good cold water. Amen. There's no reason to be drinking. You with me? But let me let me show you some stuff today. Let me show you. I'm going to have you help me here so we can go a little faster. Numbers, uh, did I go to Numbers yet? No? Numbers 6, verse 2, or no, Numbers 6, 1 through 3. Number six, one through three, and I want to have Alex help me read there. You ready, Pastor? Huh? Are you ready for me to read it? Yes, ma'am. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and he he shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. 
All of the days of, the, of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the okay. days... Is that, that one, two, three? That was four. So you went one through four. I told you one through three. <laughs> Do it again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see, Naomi help me, Matthew 2, 23. Let's see, where's Sister Mary? Sister Mary, read me Mark 14, 67. I think it's 67. Sister Lucy, Mark 16, 6. Mark 16, 6. You got your Bible there, Dennis? Luke 1, 13 through 15. Luke 1, 13 through 15. All right, Matthew 2, 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken to the, by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Okay, he's speaking of Jesus there. Jesus had just seen the, 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 the was it the, uh, after his birth, not the, not the wise men, but the shepherds had come. Yeah, I think the wise men had come already. Uh, and, and then the, yeah, because it was the wise men that came and, and, and Herod had said, uh, send me word where he's at so I might come and worship. And the wise men went a different direction home and he got all mad when he killed all them babies. So he was killing kids back then too. And God, an angel of the Lord spoke to, to Joseph, said, take Jesus into Egypt and hide. And then years later, I don't know how many years later, but years later, he, the, the same angel spoke to him, said, go back now. That man that tried to kill him was, is dead. Yeah. So go back. And he went back into Jerusalem. And there was Herod, I think Agrippa was his son, and he was worse than the, the Herod the Great. And so the angel told Herod, I mean, Joseph, go to Nazareth. And that's what she just read. And that scripture shall be fulfilled, but it was spoken by the prophet. Does it tell you what what uh, what uh, prophet said that? Or no? Like, you know, on the bottom? Which was spoken by the prophet, Go into Nazareth, for he shall be called a Nazarene. And we're learning about what a Nazarene means. A Nazarene is one that's separated. You with me? One that's not out there drinking. Many people are always saying, well, Jesus was drinking wine. Jesus was drinking wine, and he was a wine bibber and all this stuff. Jesus was not a drunk. You with me? May He may be, may, he may be drank, and I'm, I'm sure they had to have what they had today called grape juice, which was the fruit of the vine. But remember it talked about vinegar in there being fermented and stuff like that? I don't think Jesus went around drunk. How could Jesus have been sober and not have been attacked by the enemy? Yeah. He's walking around all drunk. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And so, you know what I mean? So Jesus was separated. He went to even Nazareth to be raised as a Nazarene. And also, let's see, what was it, Mark 14, 67? Was that good, Mary? Yes. What does it say? Meanwhile, Peter was below in the courtyard. One of the maids who worked for the high priest knows Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and then announced, You were with Jesus the Nazarene. You were with Jesus the Nazarene. Remember? Oh, did we see that? Yeah. I seen the movie. Well, we, we seen the movie how we went the other night. Yeah. Remember when he went and he started cussing and he got all mad because they were saying he was with Jesus? And uh, and he goes, You were one of, you were with Jesus. You were one of them Nazarenes. You're them ones, bro, that set yourself apart. Yeah. Remember I was talking about the temple? You can be a Christian who wants to come and hang out there in the back and the outer courts with, with even sinners. You with me? Because sinners are welcome here. You with me? And we're hoping that in the process of time, they're going to get, you know what I mean, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and sanctified and all that good stuff. You with me? But, but no, in no wise will I ever let, let, let them come and disrupt this church. You with me? I mean, we're here to preach the gospel. We're here, you know what I mean? But if there was any way that they came in trying to do anything wrong or bad, then I wouldn't have a problem saying, you know what? Go, I, I mean, let me give you a map of several good churches in town. Go hit it, you know what I mean? 
but but many you know I mean you might be the kind that says you know I, I just I'm just comfortable hanging out here just you know maybe having a drink once in a while smoking some weed taking a pill and I you know Jesus loves me if you want to play that game that's up to you but I want you to know that there's going to be a judgment one day. You with me? There's going to be a day where God separates us, and there's going to be a judgment, and, he, and then I really believe it. He's going to judge you according to what you've done for him. You with me? And if you're out there drinking, doing drugs, and, 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 and still coming to church, still loving Jesus, and trying to have both women, come on, that's like trying to balance two wives. You can't do it. You with me? You got to make a choice. And I know nobody wants to be out there doing stuff like that. God wants you to come closer. And he understands it's a process, but it's a progression, because you got to go from over there. And I didn't tell you about the outer courts. The outer courts, you came into the, you know, like the threshing, threshold of a, of a door. You came into the, into the temple of God, and you came in, and he says, Enter my gates with thanksgiving, come into my courts with praise. So you're coming in praising and thanking God, and first thing you would hit was a labor, was it was it like a baptistry, if you would. You with me? Where you would go and, and the, the priests they would wash, they would they would cleanse themselves, wash their hands and maybe their face and feet, whatever it was, and they would wash in that. You know what I mean? And and then they would go and and then there was a, there was like a big pit where they would offer burnt sacrifices. A lamb. You with me? And, Je and, and, and Jesus was that sacrificial lamb. He washes us by the washing of the water of the word. He says, enter my gates with thanksgiving. There's a progression there. You know what I mean? You're getting deeper with God. You want to come in and just sing some songs? That's cool. But if you want to come in and get washed, that's even better. You want to come and accept his son as Lord, your Lord and Savior and the Lamb of God for your life who takes away the sins of the world? Enter into the holy place. You want to come in there and understand the word deeper, understand the light of God and the illumination of who he really is? You with me? That anointing, that unction that's on the inside of you, he said, I'll teach you all things. There's coming a day, and I can't wait for the day. He says that you will need no one to teach you, but the Holy Spirit on the inside will teach you all things. Yeah. You with me? And you won't, have, you won't have anybody to blame. And to go into that very place of worship, the altar of incense where you're offering sacrifices unto God. Awesome worship. But to go even deeper into the very presence of God. That's what he wanted. That's what a Nazarite wanted. You know what I mean? And I really, I really pray and I hope that's what these Catholics really want. To get a little closer to God. How many of you know them? You love them? These are your family members. A lot of good people, a lot of good Mexicanos, a lot of good people in New Mexico. Viva Nuevo Mexico. You with me? They have the Santuario there. They have this, uh, these people. You know, I'm hoping that's their deepest desire is to really get closer to God. Because it's not God's will that any should perish. The Jehovah's Witness. It's my hope that somehow in that religion, they'll have an encounter with this Christ. Paul did it in Judaism. Why can't God bring a revival with Jehovah's Witness? Mormons give their lives to Christ for real? Come on now. Satanic, Satan worshipers? God come in, just light up that dark pit. So you know what I called you? I've, 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 I've heard them, I've, I've watched them preach, I've read about many Satan priests and, and, and priestesses and stuff that have gotten yeah. saved and given their lives to Jesus. So it's possible. Yeah. But we're talking about you tonight. Coming to a deeper place with God. Yeah. Going deeper to where you're, you're, you're doing things that other people don't want to do. Yeah. You with me? How hungry are you tonight? He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for they shall be filled. You with me? Who had the next scripture there? I think it was uh, Mark 6, 6, 16, 6. 16, 6? Yeah. I think this is about the resurrection. Watch. What does it say? 
Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Amen. You're looking for the Nazarite, he said. Luke 1, 13 through 50. Brother Dennis, I think you have that one. What does it say? But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zacharias. For I have come to tell you that God has heard your prayer, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. You will both have great joy and gladness at his birth, and may rejoice with you. For he will be one of the Lord's great men. He must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will never touch wine or hard liquor. <laughs> I asked you a minute ago when we were talking about the temple, how many of you just want to hang out with, uh, with the regulars and be a status quo, quo, you know, what they call today, you know, just a Christian. Do you know that they call our nation a Christian nation? Yeah. Obama's trying to read that. You, you say, no, we're not Christian. We may, you know, we're not Muslim, we're not this and that, but he's, he's pushing towards Muslim. But they used to call our nation a Christian nation. Yeah. And if you lived in America, Saddam Hussein and all them people, they consider you a Christian. They considered everyone in, the, in that 911 bombing and that airplane crash, a uh, terrorist attack, a Christian. Yeah. Just because they lived in the United States, so they wanted to kill every single one of them. Yeah. You with me? And so to them, you know what I mean? You know, the, the, I mean, if you look around and say, man, they're not a Christian. Well, to, to, the, to the outsider we are. But you in your heart know them people are not Christian people. Yeah. You with me? I mean, they, this is, you know, there's there's a difference. You know, I mean, I don't want to get into that, but there's a difference between those who really want to serve the Lord and walk with God, and those who want to just have the the label that we're a Christian. And God wants you to come so much further with Him. You with me? I mean, I guess that's who I'm talking to tonight. You know what I mean? Those of you who want to go deeper with God. He said it. He, what did you say in that verse 15 there? You said something about John the Baptist will, will, will not be have strong drink or, or, or wine for God's, you know what I mean? He's separated. He's, he's, he's consecrated for the Lord's word. He's going to be a Nazareth. He's going to be one that's separated. I mean, John the Baptist was crazy. He was wild. He had long hair, man. He was out there eating uh, uh, wild honey and, and bugs and stuff dressing in camel's hair you with me? not the latest fashions you with me? he had leather, leather sandals not the Stacy Adams thank you Jesus for Stacy's but he was uh, he, you know what I mean he had separated himself he consecrated himself or he actually, God did the consecrating. God's the one that called him. And I'm telling you tonight, I really believe this with all my heart. Okay? I believe God called you. Amen. You with me? Yeah. Why did he bring you to this church? You with me? I'm not saying that by any means that I think we're better. And I, There's people out there talking smack, eh? Yeah. And we think we're better and, you know, holier than thou and all this. It has nothing to do with this, but we do want to be holy one day. We do want to be like more like Jesus every day. You with me? Are we perfect? Do we have flaws? And sh Yes, we have flaws. And no, we're not perfect. But we're trying. We're going after God. We want to go deeper. And the, you know what I mean? And, and, and it seems like the closer you get, the harder the, 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 the resistance. I heard one pastor one time... He, uh, well, this guy named Phil Aguilar, he was a pastor of uh, Set Free Outreach, who we were, and when we first started our church, they were out of Orange County, like a biker church, bro. These guys rode up 200 deep on Harleys with leathers and all this. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the pastor would preach with mad dogs in his leather vest, talking about Jesus, and he'd have little viejitas, and the ushers were big old monster bikers, and they'd sister, and they'd pick them up. Ho, ho, ho. They'd take them to their seat and stuff. And you had skaters and surfers and low riders and it was a cool church. Yeah. Rappers and it was cool. You know? Yeah. But when we first started our church, we were we were set free on rich and I have no idea why I'm going where I'm going with this story. <laughs> what was I talking about? 
<laughs> this is one of those some timers. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> Separating. Okay. Nazarene pastor, Nazarene, maybe that's God's way of saying, okay, son, move on. <laughs> All right, you want me to move? All right, let's go. Proverbs 23, verse 20 and 21. This one's heavy duty right here. The Nazarene was somebody that didn't drink. Proverbs 23. Verse 20 and 21 says this, Be not among wine-bibbers, um, among uh, riotous, or no, what does that say? Among riotous eaters? Wow, you guys got not the King James, all right? What does it say, Al, uh, 20 and 21? Among righteous eaters. Okay, start at 20 and 21. Be not among wine-bibbers, among righteous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the gluten shall not come to pro poverty, and drowsiness shall come to poverty, shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. Shall come to poverty, drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. You ever seen, we, we, we've done so many outreaches, we've done LA, we've done Albuquerque, we've done, I mean, I'm talking inner city street ministry, on the streets, heroin addicts, as homeless, laying in their own filth, and uh, women with children, and prostitutes, we've been right in the midst of Skid Row, and all this stuff, you know what I mean, and, and, we've, and, and in Vegas, we did Vegas, that was heavy duty. But we've seen guys that were physicians, brother, that were doctors, that were lawyers, and people who we met on the streets living under bridges, just like you. You with me? Prominent men. I think Gerald was telling me the story, the show he's seen with guys coming, rich men and stuff, they hit Vegas, gamble all their stuff, and then they get, you know what I mean? Start partying, get hooked on meth, or get hooked on crack, or something like that. And we talked to them. We were right there. We fed them. Yeah. You with me? Alcoholics, man. I mean, you know what I mean? Just right there dancing all crazy with nothing but rags. Women that are in their 70s. My mother-in-law, we took her with us. I don't know if you remember when we were in that ugly place and that lady was old and she was in her 70s or maybe even older with underwear and nylons and she was dancing and stuff that was just, I mean, it made, made everybody blush. Even the sinner was like, oh God, come on, put some on. <laughs> and that's what drinking will do to you. Yeah. You with me? Watch what it says here. Look, we ain't done with that chapter. Go down to verse 29. Let me just read 26 for you. I like this. I'll read it. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Alex, read from 29 on to the end. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? And who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when, is, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine, thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, that shall be, be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I have felt it not. When shall I awake? When will, when, I will seek it yet again. I will say, oh, I remember. <laughs> Sister Mary, I want you to read that from 29 down in the New Living Translation. Do you have it? Do you have the New Living Translation? Yeah, yeah. yeah 29 all the way to the end. Kind of read it kind of loud, though. Whose heart is filled with anguish and sorrow? Who is always fighting and quarreling? Who is the man with bloodshot eyes and many wounds? It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new mixtures and drinks. Don't let the sparkle and the smooth taste of strong wine deceive you. 
For in the end, it, it bites like a poisonous serpent. It stings like an adder. You will see, you, list, you will hallucinate and have delirium tremens. And you will say foolish, silly things that would embarrass you no end when you are sober. You will stagger like a soul, sailor <laughs> tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast. And afterwards you will say, I didn't even know it when they beat me up. Let's go and have another drink. Wow. That was heavy duty right there. Yeah. I mean, you had some of those nights. <laughs> you ever had those nights, your bed's just doing that, you're like... <laughs> None of you, huh? <laughs> I'm with you, Al. I was like, back here. I live my life like that. Yeah. Thought you were a sailor, uh, cussed like one, but... Yeah. Huh? Didn't even feel when they beat you up. Anybody remember those? Yeah. Black guy, what happened to me? Or oh, you don't remember when you were on the table and you fell and you fought and hit you with the car and you went under and they run you over and I don't remember. Ankle all twisted. You don't remember, huh? Proverbs 31. Go there real quick. How many of you know of Proverbs 31 is about the virtuous woman? Yeah. But it, it says something before Proverbs 31, woman. Verse, let's see, 4 through 7. Al, you read it, and I'm going to let my mother-in-law read it again. Verse 4 through 7 of Proverbs 31. Go ahead real loud, Al. It is not for kings, O Limiao. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the, for the dumb and in the... Okay, okay, that's it. Um, Sister Mary, verse 4 through 7. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, to drink wine and whiskey, for if they drink, they may forget their duties and be unable to give justice to those who are oppressed. Hard liquor is for sick men at the brink of death, and wine for those in deep depression. Let them drink to forget their poverty and misery. You, you should defend those who cannot help themselves. Okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> So he was talking about kings, and he was saying, oh, Lem Lemuel, he said this, th th it's not for kings, it's not for kings to be drinking wine and drinking this whiskey. And you say, well, that's not, I'm not a king. Are you saved tonight? Yeah. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you been born again? Are you with me? Have you repented of your sins and asked him to come in your heart? Revelation chapter 1 and 6, and also Revelation chapter 5 and 10 says, He has made us, who has made us, kings and priests. Jesus made us kings and priests. He said, it is not for kings to be drinking. <coughs> I really believe he was saying, it's not for you as a Christian. Listen, at one time you acted dumb. At one time you wanted to do, you needed to do that stuff. Because you didn't know any better. He's like, dude, I, I just stirred your pastor up to give you this message so tonight you know better. You don't need that stuff. How many of you can say tonight, how many of you can say tonight, hey, pastor, um, liquor destroyed my family. Maybe your parents or your grandparents were, your grandpa, your dad, somebody was domestic violence, beat your grandma or maybe your grandma. My grandmother got saved in a bar. I mean, she fell off her bar stool. You know what it was? It was with the wine. My, my mom would pray for my grandma to be saved or for God to do something. My mom tells me the story where she literally one day laid her life down on the floor. Says, God, I want to die here. Sa save my mother and take my life. I believe God honored that prayer. Because it was at the bar stool that she says, no, she says that she was drinking her wine and she seen my mother's face in her wine. 
falls off the bar stool and breaks her hip. She never ever went back to a bar again. Gave her life to Jesus, got saved, you with me? Put her drunkenness away. I don't know how old she was when she got saved, but I'm assuming it was in later life that she gave her life to Jesus. Are you with me? Yeah. And she was in the bars. My sister who prayed for me was, was, was a bar hop, man. She'd go from bar to bar, men to men. She was a, she was a partier, hard like a man. Yeah. Fighting, and I think the last thing was a woman took a bottle and cut her face wide open like that, where the fat of her cheeks were just open. And, and, that, and you know what I mean? And she, she, she had to stop. Something had to change. She was an alcoholic, had been in so many bad situations. You with me? Yeah. And then she got born again and saved. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And then she, they both began to pray for me. Yeah. And little, little did they know by the time I was 11, and some of you say, man, I was 10, 11, started getting mom and dad's stuff and drinking and stuff yeah. like that. And, yeah. And, and, and I don't know about you, but every wedding that we ever went to, that I talk about, there used to be weddings, everyone had a fight in it. Yeah. Your uncles, your somebody fought, beat somebody up. There was a whole family fighting, and yeah. this and that happened. It never turns out good. Yeah. Go out with your wife or husband to go have a good time and drink. You end up beating each other up or getting beat up, yeah. wrecking the car, going, getting yeah. the DUI. Yeah. Something happens every single time. He said, it's not for you now as a Christian. It's not for you. You with me? I understand what I'm saying tonight. I'm talking to those who want to go deeper with God. You really want your life close to God. You really want to give Him everything. I'm talking to you, and you guys got to understand too. Understand this good, that some of your family and some of your friends who, although they say they're born again, and I'm not doubting that. Maybe they are. They don't want to go deeper with God. They want to stay out there, out there hanging out, just, you know, once in a while, show up, come on now, and, 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 and you know, party a little bit here and there. And I'm not doubting if they ever accepted the Lord. I'm not doubting that at all. I know many people who've given their lives to Jesus, and you know them too. They just walked away from the Lord. You with me? And, and, and when they do come to church, they want to hang out in the outer courts and be out there and just say, you know, I want... God, but I kind of want the world too. I want both. Yeah. Yeah. I want both wives. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. How many know Abraham when he had he had his wife and then he got a handmaid and they kind of scrapped. They got in some arguments. Yeah. Yeah. She said, send him in there with her handmaid and he keeps it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said, honey, would honey, would you honey? He was in the tent. She said, man, he never cleaned the house. Nothing I asked him to do, but that's sure her thing he jumped on. Huh? Dear Lord, help us. Amen? God has made us, Jesus made us kings and priests. He said in Proverbs 31, it's not for you kings, O Lemuel, to have strong drink and be drinking whiskey and all this stuff. It's not right for you to do that. Why? He said, because you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, he said, you may be over there checking out strange women. I know there's, a, there's more women here tonight than men, but those of you that have been out in the clubs, you know what I mean? I'm sure there's them times you like, what in the heck did I bring home last night? <laughs> you thought it was Fabio, man. Freaky Freddy it was down from the 4th Street. The limbs, man. Kind of causing all this cane and stuff. You'd be like, oh, what happened? Last night, man, he looked like... He looked like John Travolta on the dance floor. <laughs> That's what happens when you drink. That's what he was telling you. You're going to get jacked up. You with me? I, I, I've never really watched the movie, but I've seen parts of that movie called Hangover. You know what I mean? Flipping through channels. And I seen it the other night when, when I just seen him waking up from the next day. One of them had a goat, I think. Yeah. I don't know what he was doing with the goat. <laughs> and one of them had, what did he have, a tattoo or something in his face? Or I don't know what. He shaved his head and all this. And I'm thinking, oh, dear Lord, I remember those nights. <laughs> Not the goats. 
<laughs> Nothing I want to admit to here on the pulpit. <laughs> Last scripture, Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18. Somebody read that for me. Who wants to read? You got it, read it. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And be not drunk with wine with wherein is excess. Some translation, I don't know which one is it. Is it the NIV? It says that leads to debauchery. Yeah. yeah. Debauchery? You know what that means? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it pretty much means spring break. <laughs> You can imagine what happens in spring break, right? In, 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 in down in, in uh, Texas. I know there's some places down in Florida. Vegas. You don't want to go to Vegas for spring break. Oh, dear Lord, Vegas is bad enough on the regular days. But how many of you imagine spring break and you can under, you could just imagine when you used to party? Yeah. You say, oh, dear Lord, Jesus, help us. You with me? Yeah. He says, don't be drunk with wine because you're going to end up there. Yeah. And what a sad thing it is when people who have been born again and saved end up there. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Let me know God didn't save you so that you can continue doing them things. Yeah. You with me? He came to save you from those things. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But it's, you know what I mean? And you got so many Christians that want to argue about. Can I, why can't I drink and all this? No, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. I'm not here to, you know what I mean, to say, you know. I'm here tonight to tell you, those of you who want to go deeper with God, those of you who, even, even the Catholics are doing it, they're committing 40 days of their life to, to, to fast from something, some sin, something they know is, 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 is causing them maybe to sin against God. And if they're doing it, why not us? Why not say, God, if anything, I just want to, I, I, man, I don't even, I'm not even ask you if drinking's wrong or, 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 you know what I mean, smoking weed is right or wrong or this and that. I don't have to ask. You with me? God told me a long time ago when I first, I wasn't even saved about smoking weed. You with me? And it doesn't make it any different today whether it's legal or not. Maybe you'll feel better. Maybe it'll hang, help your depression. Oh, I'm sure it will. Shoot some heroin, it'll help your depression too. Drink a fifth of vodka, it'll help your depression. Or try getting on your knees and trusting the Lord and He'll help your depression. He'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness on you. You with me? I mean, People don't want to try Jesus anymore. Yeah. They want just a quick fix and the easy thing and stuff. And you know what I mean? All I know is that that, that uh, you know alcohol ruined my life, man. Ruined my marriage. My, you know what I mean? I wasn't married to my wife, but when she was my girlfriend, I was I was bad. I was really bad on it. I was bad, you know. And uh, you know, so many people that I know love. Uh, some have even died on alcohol. My father-in-law died of cirrhosis. My brother, uh, well, my, my wife's uncle died, 33 years old, I think, of cirrhosis. How many people know somebody that we just, you know, just died of cirrhosis because they didn't stop drinking? I mean, you know, it's like, man, well, why do that? If God saved you, he said, don't be drunk with wine, be filled with the Holy Ghost. That Holy Spirit will light you on fire. That Holy Spirit will give you everything. Why do you drink? Why do people drink anyway? To get away from the problem. To get away. There's problems. There's issues. You know what? I can't handle this. I need a drink. Yeah. And we turn to stuff like that. And God's like, boy, that's like a slap in the face to, tell, to say, I don't need my wife. I need another woman. Yeah. Yeah. I just need somebody different. Somebody, you know, new. That's like a slap in the face to my wife. Yep. Yep. And that's like a slap in the face to the Lord to say, you know what, I don't need the Holy Spirit. I don't need what you're talking about. I don't need that Bible. I don't need church. What I need is a drink. What I need is a... 
What I need is, uh, you know what I mean, to take another pill. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know what, God's, God's enough. Yes. Yes. God is enough. That's yes. all you need. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you will sell out, if you will give it all, you yes. know what I mean, to Jesus, and, and you would, you know what I mean, cut some of that junk and cut some of them people out of your life. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you have to do it. And I always tell people, I say, if you go out after somebody and they're in the world and they're out there drowning in the, in the sea, they're out there in the beach and they're drowning and you, you rush out to save them, swim out to them, grab a hold of them. When they're drowning, they're going to hit you, bite you, punch you, step on you, push you down underwater to try and save themselves and they will eventually kill you. I say, you know what, what they teach you? Let them pass out. Let them go under. Let them pass out. Then you come up behind them and you swim them to shore. You do CPR or whatever you can, but don't don't go with them because they're going to take you down. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And we're trying to save everybody and they're beating us up. Yeah. Come on now. you got to have the wisdom to know when to go in. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And say, you know what, I'm just not. My pastor said, go preach, so I'm going to go preach to him. You know, pray for wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Give me an understanding heart. Give me, you know what I mean, a revelation of when, what to do, how to do, when to do it. He's, he's willing to tell you. You with me? But you're never going to save them people. You with me? I'm telling you, we have to cut family and friends off. You know, I had to tell all my friends, don't you come to my house no more. I had to tell loved ones, you know what I mean? Listen, I'm not coming to your house. I'm not going where you're at. We're not going to do this. And you're not, that, uh, we're not gonna, I'm not going to be around alcohol. Yeah. God saved me from that. Yeah. And, and, and you know what I mean? To me, it, you know, it's, it's not right. Maybe other Christians, to them, it's fine. You know, but to me, it's not because it destroyed my life. It pushed me away from my children, away from my wife. It, it caused trouble in my home with my parents. It caused me much trouble with the law. I hurt people on the alcohol. You with me? And it's, you know what I mean? I don't know. It, to me, it's not acceptable. You, you with me? Not to those, let me say this, let me clarify. Not to those who want to come in the temple of God and fellowship with Him. If you want to stay out there far away, and you know, kind of look at him at a distance and wave every once in a while and love you, Lord. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want to do. You with me? Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I mean, it's not to anyone particular, it's to anyone who will come, anyone who will listen. God Himself tonight is asking you, come here, come closer. Maybe you've never been in that place of even really getting a revelation of what His Word is or understanding what, why we come in here and we worship the way we do. You might be here. I've had people here come and tell some of our people, Oh, Pastor, he gets all into it and then wants us to raise our hands too. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Where, bro? <laughs> here? Come on now. You used to get in concerts and be waving your hands with the devil. And you, you're not there yet to lift your hands to God? No, you just like staying out there. And the thing about that is that they want to pull, those of you who really want to serve God, they want to pull you down with them. And if you let them, it's, it's only your fault. You with me? You got to be the one to say, you know what, hey man, cortalo, cut the cord. You throw that line out there and they're pulling you under, you know what I mean? And, and they're taking you down, get your knife, uh, cut the cord. Yeah. Let them go. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Hey Amen. Be like that, that, that chick on the, the Titanic. What's her name? I'll never let you go, Jack. I'll never let you go. She's like that and she let him go. He's going underwater, Jack. What's his name, DiCaprio? He's going underwater, you can just see his face going down. <laughs> you let him go, lying down. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> to save yourself. Sometimes you gotta cut him off. As, as handsome as he is. 
Come on now. As handsome and gorgeous and the hunk of a man he is. As much as it hurts. As hard as it is. Unless you want to die too. You with me? That lady saved herself. You with me? She lived to be an old lady with a big blue diamond. <laughs> huh? Amen? Don't be like that commercial that says you don't want to lose your cable or what is this? And it's because if you do this, then this happens. And if you do this, then you end up doing this. And you know what's the commercial I'm talking about? Yeah. What was it? What is the commercial? What? Oh, I forgot. Cable? Is yeah, it a cable? cable it goes out. And if it goes out, you're going to end up in a place you don't want to be with some dangerous criminals that are going to kill you and all this, and you don't want to go there. So, you know, pay your cable. Or I don't know what yeah, it's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stand with me tonight. You don't want to go there, amen? And the whole thing about it is, is that not me, guys. It has nothing to do with me other than I'm the preacher tonight. It's a God saying, come here, me home. Ruben, come, come closer. Gerald, come closer to me. It has nothing to do with Pastor Vince. It has nothing to do with Pastor Susan. It has nothing to do with where I sit in church. It has nothing to do with anything like that. It has to do with God calling you. Come here. Come closer to me. I want to hold you. I want to embrace you. You with me? It's kind of like your kids. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same as... I, I used to love my kids a lot, but I love my grandkids even more. Had I known that the grandkids were better, I would have just went straight to grandkids and cut the kids out completely. But just to hold my grandkids in my arms or, you know what I mean, just to, just to love them and just to appreciate them, it's just like, you know, that's, that's kind of God's heart saying, come here. You with me? Don't just kind of run around and say hi and, you know, do you have a dollar? Come here, come here. You with me? Did your grandpas ever do that? Anybody ever do that? In a good way? In a loving way? Man. Come here and just hug you and hold you and kiss you and spoil you. <laughs> and that's all God wants for you tonight. Amen. God's not this crazy man that's up there who just wants to control you. <laughs> He's an awesome God. He's like a heavenly father. He is, the Bible calls him, our heavenly father. And he's like, come here, son. Spend some time with me. Come closer. I want to know you more. You with me? And that's his cry for you tonight. Come here, man. Separate yourself. That's what it was, the separation, the, 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 the commitment. You with me? Pushing other stuff out and saying, God, I want you, Lord. I want your will. I want you, you know I mean? Your heart. How many of us gave years to drunkenness, man? I wasn't old. I wasn't that old when I got saved. I was only 19 years old. But from 11 to 19 was a horrible life. Other than my, my girlfriend and my kids being born and my mother in my life, my life was horrible. I, I wish I could erase the whole thing. The incidents, the crimes, the, 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 the loneliness. You with me? Is everybody that, you know, I, I really believe it. Everybody out drinking and getting high, all that, really struggling with loneliness. Really trying to fill a void that's inside of them that only God can fill. You know? And when I was 19, that's when it happened for me. And God said, man, you give me your life, I'll deliver you. You, I told you the story about me hitting the alcohol when we got married, and God said, you'll never need that again. When you meet God and you, you get into his presence, you never need anything else. Amen. You with me? You'll be complete. He said, don't be drunk in wine. Be filled with the Spirit of God. The love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, self-control. God will give you all that stuff. You know what I mean? And then you can be that person you always wanted to be. You with me? And only he can do that. But he's calling for that 
that separation has got to be there. It's got to be there. He said, if you love your life, you know what I mean? You're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, you're going to find it. You know? And it's in the Julio wears the shirt that says, the biggest loser. It has nothing to do with the weight loss program or the movie that you see. It has to do with losing yourself. Saying, God, all right, my, my identity is Naomi when she got saved. They preached a message called uh, a new identity. By losing that old identity, who you were, what people saw you as. Taking up a new identity of who you've always wanted to be. That's what he said. I'll give you hope and an expected end. I'll give you something to look forward to. That's what I want to tell you tonight. There's hope in Jesus Christ. And sometimes we as Christians, we lose that. We lose that. We were watching all the problems and all the issues and all the struggles and all the stuff and the devil's overwhelming you and you're drowning and all because you're looking at all the problems. God's like, look at me. I walk on water when you're drowning. I'll come pull you up like I pulled Peter out of that water. I'll lift you up too. Get your eyes on Christ tonight. He's your hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You with me? problem with us is we're, we got our eyes on this world and this world's not your home. You with me? If you lose everything, so what? Amen. As long as you have Jesus, man, you can always start over. Amen. You with me? And, and you know what I mean? And tonight, you know what I mean? That's all he wants. That's all he desires. So all I'm going to ask you is tonight, you know what I mean? I'm not even going to have you come to the altar because I don't want any flesh, I don't want anybody to try and, you know, I don't want to embarrass, or I don't want anybody to try and impress, I don't want anything like that. This is something you got to make, it's a decision you got to make on your own. I want to go after God with all my heart. I don't